All right, LA Grand Prix here in Los Angeles at UCLA. This, of course, was one of the top competitions coming into the, the season, right? We had top names who were competing here. A lot of names dropped out and there was a lot of controversy, but let's talk about some of these races. Of course, first off, that women's 100 meter dash. Now, this was supposed to be a huge race between Talu, Hobbs, and Shakira Richardson. All three of them, some of the best in the world right now, they were gonna be going head to head. They had the heats. Talu came away running 10.88 seconds, actually kind of running down Aaliyah Hobbs, she ran 10.95. So both of them were really looking good going into the finals. Shakira Richardson, she managed to take the win in her heat, 10.90 seconds. So everything was looking good going into the finals. You also saw some other women like more like a Kennison, you had Alana Reed. So this is a very strong final, but into the final, a lot of confusion, a lot of controversy. I honestly don't even know what went down. We got to the women's 100 meter final and there were three open lanes, Marie Jose Talou, Aliyah Hobbs, and Shakira Richardson. None of the three were there. No one really knew what was going on. No one has a real explanation. Even to this point, maybe someone got injured, maybe someone didn't, I don't know what's going on, but unfortunately none of the three ladies who, you know, a lot of us were looking forward to were in that race. But regardless, more Lockie Kinnison. 2016 Olympic champion in the 4x1. She took the win here in 10.97 seconds. This is her second sub-11 performance of this year. Again, didn't have some of those top names, but it shows her consistency. She spoke about how she's been training and how training with Bobby has been going very well. This so, is my second year out here at in LA at UCLA training with Bobby. And I feel like after the first year of just learning a lot of new things, um, it just starts to, everything starts to click and everything that he's been saying over and over again finally just like makes sense. Well, so I'm looking forward to see what she's gonna do. Again, I still do think that Shakira Richardson, Hobbs, and also Tamari Davis are probably the top three, but we're gonna see what other women are going to be stepping up to the plate. Now, let's talk about that men's 100 meter dash as well. This also was another high quality race. Didn't have heats, only had the finals, and we were looking at Christian Coleman, right? He was the guy, he was the name in this race. He just ran um, 9.78 seconds out in Bermuda. It was windy, of course, but Christian Coleman actually finished third place in this race. Akeem Blake from Jamaica, 9.89 seconds, his first time under 9.90 seconds. So getting that sub 9.9, really joining Oblique Seville as you know the second Jamaican guy to really you know push into the forefront, leading the next generation of Jamaican sprinters. <laughs> As I said, I'm not pushing up at the pressure myself. I'm just going out there and have fun. That's it. Yeah. No rival, nothing, just having fun. Akeem Blake is going to be dangerous. Both these Jamaican guys are going to be dangerous. But let's not sleep on the U.S. guys as well, right? Christian Coleman, 9.91. So not a season's best. Strong performance from him. Krivan Charleston actually finished second place, 9.91. Just edging ahead of Christian Coleman. Ronnie Baker, 10.01. Ronnie Baker has been on a comeback and he spoke about how he's feeling good, feeling healthy after some setbacks and he's looking forward to seeing this. Well, what happens this year. I'm feeling good. I had uh, an early injury earlier this year, calf injury. So that's why I missed the indoor season. So I take six weeks off for that. And so I'm hopeful, man. Uh, I'm, I'm good, I'm, I'm moving in the right direction. We're looking at a lot of guys who are really stepping up to the plate in this 100 meter dash. Of course there's Curly, right? Of course there's Noel Lyles, of course there's Omanyala, but this is a good 100 meter field. Akeem Blake entering into that conversation as a metal threat. Now, I also have to talk about the men's shot put. Ryan Krauser threw a world record, 23.56 meters. World record surpassing his previous record of 23.37 meters. That is a massive, massive throw. But what was also amazing was his entire series, 23.23. 23.31, 22.94, and then 23.56. He also threw 22.80 and 22.86. This is unprecedented. That second throw of 23.31 actually would have been the second farthest throw in history just behind his previous world record. It's now the third farthest throw in history. And his first throw of 23.23 is now the fifth farthest throw in history. So we're talking about extreme dominance by Ryan Krauser. He's changed up the way that he's thrown over the past couple months since about indoor and it's really coming together now. It's crazy to think, but is 24 meters in conversation? I mean, I don't know. 23.5 is out of this world and Ryan Krauser is on another level. Always keep a lookout for what he's gonna do. Now let's move over to the women's 100 meter hurdles. This was basically an Olympic world championship final field. We had Camacho Quinn, we had Toby Amisan, you had Nia Ali, you had Kenny Harrison, Tia Jones, Daniel Williams, everyone was in this race. And Camacho Quinn showed why she is the Olympic champion, shows why she's one of the fastest in history. She came away with the win, a legal 12.31 seconds to get the win, again, over this very high quality field. This 
season is just more so having fun. Like I don't, I don't really want to like stress myself out or even try to talk about a world record. Because um, if that happens, that happens. But for me, it's just doing the best that I can do. Um, you know, I still just took our time. Like I'm, I'm only 26, so. Kenny Harrison, 12.35. So running the 12 threes, she's been really great all season. Definitely gonna be uh, seeing what she does. Tia Jones, she actually beat Kenny Harrison at Atlanta uh, a couple weeks ago. So she managed to get the third place finish here. And then of course the rest of the women. Toby Amasan, she just got a master's degree, right? So she uh, was supposed to run in Atlanta. Unfortunately, wasn't able to come to that race, but she came here. Unfortunately finished last, but remember last year, she actually didn't have you know an amazing, spectacular season. She had a lot of losses, came to world championships, got the world record, got the gold medal. So not too worried about what she's going to be doing for the rest of the season. I'm looking forward to seeing what she does in Budapest. So amazing field here. Jasmine Camacho Quinn, she is that woman in the 100 meter hurdles. Now moving over to the women's 400 meters. This might have been the race of the entire competition. Marlo Polino managed to run 48.98 seconds. This is her second time under the 49 second barrier. This is a national record, a world lead, a huge motivation and a huge booster to, you know, her, you know, status as favorite in the 400. Remember, Shawna Miller Weibo is not running this year because she just gave birth to her child. Marley Dupilino is the favorite. Sydney McLaughlin Lavroni, she pulled out of this race, right? She's going to be running in Paris. Uh, I think Marley Dupilino said that, you know, she's going to be running in Paris as well. We're going to see what's happening. I am really, really looking forward to seeing Paulino really go for something big later on this year. Sawi Nasser, this was also another great race for her. 50.27 seconds. She opened up her season already, you know, her first race back since getting banned, uh, running 50.8. She had a little setback in her second race, um, but 50.27, another huge race. I actually spoke to her, you know, just before the competition yesterday, and she said that she only started training last year. So the whole time that she was off, she wasn't training until last year. Additionally, she said she never even started blocks until her first race back. So for her to really just get into training, getting into doing blocks again, she's already run 50.27 now, it can get very dangerous. Like I said, Paulino, she's a clear favorite right now, right? She is a very clear favorite. Nasser could get dangerous. Never forget 2019, never forget 48.1. She is a threat. Keep a lookout for what she does. Also, huge shout out to some of the other women, right? You had Lena Irby Jackson. She managed to run 50.38 seconds. You had Shadi Williams, a season's best 51 flat. So a lot of these women really getting into the groove in this 400 meters and opening up themselves to get on the podium when we get to Budapest later on this year. Another one is the men's 200 meter dash. Now, Terrence Laird making his comeback. This is his first 200 meter race since the Olympics trials in 2021. Check out the interview I did with him where he spoke about his time away, spoke about his injury, spoke about getting surgery, all of that. He is back now 20.06 seconds. He spoke about how he's feeling good. He spoke about how he knows how to run the 200 regardless. No, he was felt good first one to the Olympic trials. So I, I completed my goal. I ran faster than when I finished that. My last race was 2015. I ran faster than that. So um, I'll take that. I mean, almost two years not running 200. Feeling good. So I feel great. Uh, he was all the way out, you know, on the outside. He didn't even know, you know, that he was coming up for the win, but he managed to get there. He wanted to run sub 20, but came a little bit close. 20.06, this inserts him into the conversation as a potential, you know, USA uh, team maker in that 200. You, of course, you have Noah Lyles. He already has a buy. You have Arian Knighton, right? You have Kenny B. I might be hearing that Kenny B is, you know, injured. He was supposed to run in the 200 today. But then you have Fred Curley. So Terrence Laird, he is in this mix. I'm definitely looking to see what he does. Just behind him, Jareem Richards. Stay tuned for a video on Jareem Richards. Coming for Trinidad and Tobago, of course, he got a season's best, 20.08 seconds. Uh, he is very much a medal threat as well. He had an amazing 2022 season. He is very much in the mix for the medals, depending on how everyone else goes. So amazing races in that men's 200 meter dash here in LA. The men's 400 meter hurdles. Now, Ry Benjamin, he was supposed to be in this race, unfortunately pulled out, not sure of the status or what exactly is going on, but CJ Allen took advantage of this opportunity, came away with a win and a personal best of 47.91 seconds. He already ran 47 seconds, you know, earlier in the season behind Ry Benjamin. So for him to show this consistency, for him to back that up with another sub 48 performance, this shows that he is ready to potentially make the team and then potentially medal, right? Again, it's just about execution for me, you know, and being able to come out of these meets healthy and, you know, feeling like I'm executing well, but there's still a lot of work to do. You know, I, I still haven't been able to plug my stride pattern that way I want to this year, which for me is exciting, you know, to be in a position where I'm continually PRing and 
so not necessarily executing the way that I would like to. Not sure what's going on with Rye Benjamin. I think he's good, but we'll see what happens with him. Dos Santos, he's out because of surgery. Warholm hasn't opened up his ear yet. So this is really an open field if we're talking about the men's 400 meter hurdles. Right behind him, you had the other top Americans, Khalifa Rosser, right? He finished fifth place at the World Championships last year. You also had Trevor Bassett. He finished third place, got the bronze medal at the World Championships last year. So for CJ Allen to be able to take these guys down and consistently run 47 seconds, who knows what's possible for him? The men's 400 meter hurdles has been stepping up year after year. All these guys are going for, you know, top spots and spots on those podium. So keep a lookout for what CJ Allen and the rest of the guys are able to do. All right, over to the women's 200 meters. Now, Gabby Thomas, of course, was the headliner in this race. You know, she's the Olympic bronze medalist in the 200. She's run 21.61 in the 200, ran an amazing 400 this year. But unfortunately, she only finished fourth place. Now, I don't know what it means. Don't know, you know, want to read too much into it. But fourth place, finished behind Jenna Prandini. Jenna Prandi is one of the most, if not the most consistent 200 meter runner in the United States over the past couple years, right? You know, since Alex and Felix has retired. She's been putting in some great work and to get a win here in 22.34 shows that she is potentially ready to make this team again. She's also another athlete, trains with Bobby Kersey, moved with Kenny Harrison over to LA. So gonna see what Jenny Prandini has for the rest of the year. Behind her, Twanisha Terry, huge personal best, 22.44 seconds. We of course know Terry as a 100 meter runner. So for her to get a personal best here, that's just gonna add to her potential in that 100 meter dash. I'm looking forward to see what she's uh, able to do. Also, season's best for a Navia battle, 22.57. She also had a change, was competing at Ohio State. She moved to Texas to train with Gabby Thomas, Tamara Clark, and the rest of them. So really good to see a Navia battle who made the 2021 Olympic team to Tokyo. So great women's 200 meter dash. On the men's 400 meter dash side, this was a pretty big upset. I don't know. I knew Sean Bailey a little bit, but for him to be able to get the win here in 44.43 seconds over Karani James, who ran 44.5, Karani James is feeling good. He's a veteran. He's going to be ready for the world championships. Sean Bailey to get the win here this is going to be a huge confidence booster for him he'll make the jamaican team he'll go to the world championships and honestly with michael norman potentially injured wade van niekerk he's getting back right the only people i'm really confident about are karani james and then of course stephen gardner everyone else is really in a pool together so this is a great performance for sean bailey so a lot of these guys in the 400 they're really coming into the fold and we're going to see what they're able to do so again this was a kind of unconventional you know grand prix the women's 100 meters was a little strange a couple pullouts from the race but i think this was an amazing competition all together let me know what you think about this competition go in the comments you know let me know what your favorite race was let me know what you're thinking and looking forward to for the rest of the year make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel back again next time thanks for watching